Ever since we got Xfinity Mobile, the whole family now has the fastest mobile service. Back in my day, we didn't have it nearly as good. Oh yeah? Back in my day, you couldn't even stream outside the house. I, I don't like to think about it. Switch to Xfinity Mobile, the fastest mobile service with 5G and millions of Wi-Fi hotspots. Get the best price for two unlimited lines with 5G compared to the lowest price plans of the top three carriers. Just $30 a line per month. Visit Xfinity.com slash fastest mobile to learn more. Restrictions apply. Xfinity Unlimited Intro Service and Xfinity Internet Require. Taxes and fees extra. Reduce fees after 20 gigabytes of usage. Data thresholds may vary. This is Optimal Relationships Daily, Episode 1771. Keep Asking Your Partner to Dance by Henry Sawatsky with Gottman.com. Hello, everybody, and thanks so much for joining me once again. My name is Greg Audino. I'm your host and narrator on ORD. And this is the show on which I read to you each day from blogs that can help you build better relationships in your life. So let's keep this intro nice and short and get right to today's post as we optimize your life. Keep Asking Your Partner to Dance by Henry Sawatsky with Gottman.com It was 1976 and I was 14 years old. The sock hop only came around occasionally in junior high but every time, it was wrought with anticipation and dread, a mixture of emotion difficult for any 14-year-old to make sense of. It was Friday lunch hour. The lights were dimmed, the disco ball was rolling, and the dance was on. Oh, let's not forget, shoes were left at the door, hence the name Sock Hop. It was a gym floor, after all. But it wasn't until after the shoes came off and the music started that the drama began. Along with the dread, Invariably, the girls would end up on one side of the floor, with the boys on the other. We were 13 and 14 years old, and the idea of talking to a girl, never mind asking her to dance, was as terrifying as stepping off a cliff. At least for some of us. I remember standing on the boy side of the gym with my back pinned against the wall like I was stapled there. Eventually, the moment that everyone had been waiting for would happen. Two or three brave souls would cross the vast expanse under the disco ball, and each ask a girl to join him on the dance floor. Would she say yes, or would he be rejected for all to see and have to make the journey back across the floor, alone and humiliated? They were followed by the next group, and the next, until the floor was crowded with sock-hopping, head-bobbing teens. But as I stood frozen, along with my terrified and overly cautious friends, I marveled at this phenomenon. From my perspective, something remarkable was happening. These boys, my peers, were walking across the floor and offering themselves in such a dangerous manner, in such a way that the girl had all the power in the world to grant him his wish or to turn him away in rejection and humiliation. And to be sure, sometimes that's exactly what happened. Where did they get that kind of courage and self-confidence? I couldn't conceive of it. I wished I had it, but somehow the risk of being turned down and the fear of being that exposed seemed too much for me. I felt safest with my back securely pinned to the wall. Eventually, I stopped attending the sock hop ritual altogether. I told myself I had more important things to do, but the truth was that the tension I felt just became too much. I felt defeated, like I'd given up on myself. I still feel a little sad as I write about it all these years later. But it has dawned on me since I was 14 that the gym floor is somewhat proverbial It seems to still present itself in my life, in my relationships with my wife, on somewhat of a regular basis. It shows up every time I have a wish that the woman on the other side of the disco ball, also thankfully proverbial, has the power to grant or withhold. The truth is that my wife is not a woman I have admired from afar, but never actually talked to. I know she loves me and holds my heart with care. So the stakes are a little different, but... I'm regularly stunned at how often I have to peel my back off the wall to ask her to dance. And sometimes the dance is a literal one. Last fall, we were at our son's wedding in Boston. There was a dance, and for a moment, I felt 14 again. Should I ask her to dance? Will she want to, or is she secretly hoping that I won't ask? Will I look like a fool and embarrass her? But more often, the dance is less literal. It happens when I have to expose my inner world to her. My fears, my wishes, and my dreams. My failures. Admitting that I was wrong. To acknowledge that I am absolutely dependent on her acceptance in spite of these fears. Or when my wishes conflict with hers and there's a chance of contention. 
It's exactly in situations like these that I feel strangely 14 years old, and that I once again have to cross that same gym floor and simply offer myself to her. Every time I do, something beautiful happens. With a trembling heart, I reveal myself, and my wife responds to me. An intimate dance emerges, filled with twists and turns that would have been impossible to predict. And somehow, in ways that are difficult to put into words, it connects us to each other, and it deepens our relationship. I have to admit, there are times when it seems just too hard to get my back off the wall. I get stuck inside myself while the song ends and the moment is gone. I feel sad every time this happens, like I gave up on myself. And then there are the times that I do cross the floor, and it doesn't actually work out. Yeah, that's still a thing. But I've discovered that actually it doesn't feel as bad as having my back stapled to the wall while the song ends. Having the courage to show up is actually less risky than staying stuck. That's something I wish I had known at 14. So through it all, I think I figured out something here. I've learned that in order to dance, you have to cross the gym floor and offer yourself giving your partner the opportunity to accept or deny you. Without that vulnerable offering, the dance can never actually happen. And it can be scary, but the dance is worth it. You just listened to the post titled, Keep Asking Your Partner to Dance, by Henry Sawatsky with Gottman.com. Now, I know this is ORD and not Optimal Health Daily, our sister show, But living a healthy lifestyle is something I really try to emphasize. You know, I try to stay very diligent when it comes to the classics like sleep, exercise, movement, sunlight, and of course, hydration. And that just got way easier and more enjoyable thanks to our new sponsor, Liquid IV, the category-winning hydration brand fueling your well-being. One stick of Liquid IV in 16 ounces of water hydrates you two times faster and more efficiently than water alone. It has three times the electrolytes of traditional sports drinks, contains five essential vitamins, and is made with premium ingredients. And guys, even off the record, they are honestly delicious. I have been popping these packets like Skittles. It's truly the best combination of taste and effectiveness you could ask for. So truly do not wait. Grab your Liquid IV in bulk nationwide at Costco, or you can get 20% off when you go to liquidiv.com and use code ORD at checkout. That's 20% off anything you order when you shop Better Hydration today using promo code ORD at liquidiv.com. And thank you so much to Henry from the Gottman Institute for this one. I'm so happy that he went out of his way to remind us uh, what he's talking about here stretches far beyond dancing. Of course it does. But we don't always remember that, do we? Many of us possess memories like the one he's describing, and we just sort of leave them be, as if we know how we might tackle them differently, you know, if they were to occur now, but we discard them because they're done and in the past. But we mustn't do this. We must keep these memories close to us, because as he says, they often draw direct comparisons to things that we're experiencing now, things that seem insurmountable and as though they have nothing in common with what we've ever experienced in the past but they usually do. So reflect today on what lessons you've learned in the past, even from scenarios as basic as a middle school dance, and how the takeaways might actually be just as simple to apply in adult life. It's funny, normally we can see these things like 10 or 20 plus years down the road. So don't let that happen. Get a step ahead today. And with that, it is time to wrap things up here on the Tuesday show. I hope you liked this post, everyone, and that you can take something from it. I feel like that, uh, you know, if we all dig deep enough, any one of us can find that they have something similar, uh, you know, a similar experience to Henry and thus similar opportunities to apply the lessons learned in the past. So I wish you luck with that. Take care. And I will see you tomorrow for another post where your optimal life awaits.